get busy with God's business. God will be busy with your business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, family, the thing for this year says, catch the wind of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul went where? To Ephesus. When he got there, he found 12 disciples, not the 12 apostles. He found 12 followers of Jesus Christ. When he found them, he asked them one critical question. He said, when you believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they answered and said, we did not receive the Holy Spirit because we did not know that there is a Holy Spirit. Then because the Apostle Paul decided to go for God, the Apostle Paul got to know that there is something that these people are missing. How will you know that someone is missing something if you have not been to where they are? How will you know if someone does not have something if you have not asked them if they have it or not? The Apostle Paul arrayed himself and said, Lord, I am going for you. The moment that he went for God, he was able to prod them. They were able to be open and say, this is what we are missing. The Apostle Paul began to explain to them. They said, we have only received the, the baptism of John. So it means that their teachers only had shared with them the information pertaining to the baptism of John. But they did not know about the baptism of Jesus Christ. Then the Apostle Paul explained to them and said, you need to believe and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then after that, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then and then the Apostle Paul laid his hands upon them. The Bible says and then the Holy Spirit came upon them. They began to speak in strange tongues and began to proclaim God's message. What is it that they were doing? They were doing what they were never able to do before. So with the Holy Spirit upon your life, you will be able to do what you have never done before. They were able to proclaim the word of God. It means that before they received the gift of the Holy Spirit, people were not being aware about the word of God. Why? Because they did not have the boldness. Where does the boldness come from? It comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So family, there were things that they were supposed to do, but they could not do them because they did not have what will enable them to do what they are supposed to do. The Holy Spirit will enable you to do what you are supposed to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But until you catch the wind of the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to do what you are supposed to do. Yeah. The moment they were able to catch the wind of the Holy Spirit, they were able to do what they are supposed to do. They went where they have never been before. They were able to minister the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Amen. Family, let me tell you, most of the reasons why people are unable to serve God, it is because of the fear that is enslaving them from within. But the moment you receive the, God, the gift of the Holy Spirit, it will break that fear and replace it with faith. It will break that fear and replace it with boldness. So family, we need to catch the wind of the Holy Spirit in order to do God's work here on planet Earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So family, last week we have been ministering under a topic that says lessons to remember. It would uh, push us to part number two. We do not know, maybe today it will push us to part number three. But we will so much love to do what the Holy Spirit wants us to do here today through the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Word of God, family, is alive and it is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the division of the soul, the spirit, bone, and marrow. So we have learned last week that in order for you to be able to remember something, you must have stored something. Why? Because we need to store something in memory in order to be able to recall something from Remember, we have made a good example and said if you go to the exam room and you ask the Holy Spirit to remind you because the Holy Spirit is a teacher and a reminder, you ask him to remind you what you have not learned. Unfortunately, there is nothing to remember because you have not stored anything to recall from your memory. So when you ask the Holy Spirit to remind you a diagram from your textbook, don't say that I was paging through my textbook and that please Holy Spirit remind me that diagram. 
No, the Holy Spirit will remind you the diagram which you have studied. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will not remind you the disadvantages and advantages or the definition of something that you do not know. We have said, okay, if maybe that seems to be a bit complicated from the pulpit, go and try it at home from today until next week Sunday. Try to remember something that you do not know. You will cut back not having remembered anything yeah. because you do not know it. But if you have sought something in your memory, you will be able to recall it. You will be able to recollect it. You will be able to bring awareness to mind. You will be able to remember what you know. So the Holy Spirit is here to teach us and to remind us. When he teaches us, he teaches us lessons. So what we are taught are lessons. But those lessons, they are not going to be worthwhile if we do not remember them. After we have remembered, so what? You can learn something and remember it until you begin to do it. It will not serve any purpose in your life. So the Holy Spirit teaches us. He reminds us. After we remember, what do we do about what we remember? Family, it is important to do something about what we are taught and what we remember. Because that is the only way we will know if it is impactful or not. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher and is our reminder. But the foundation is so that we can do. Why would the, Jesus send the Holy Spirit who will be with us wherever we, we are, go with us wherever we go, and if only that he is here to do is to keep us excited about <laughs> being taught and remembering. And we don't have to do anything about what we are taught or remember. So the key family, it is in doing what we have been taught and what we remember. So when we do it, that is what makes a difference in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we are ministering under lessons to remember part number two. two. We are going to get our passage of scripture from the book of 1 John chapter 2. We will read verse number 20. I will read also firstly in the Old Man Christian Standard Bible. The Bible says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I will read from the Good News Translation. The Bible says, but you have had the Holy Spirit poured out on you by Christ. So all of you know the truth. That's what one man says. He says you have knowledge. So good news says you all know the truth. How do you know the truth? Because you have had the Holy Spirit poured out on you. By whom? By the master. No, by Christ. You have the Holy Spirit poured out on you by Christ. That, that enables you to do what? To know all the truth. We know all the truth because we have had the Holy Spirit poured out on us by Christ. That, that is what enables us to know the truth. Family, there is no one who is living in a worse stage like a person who is living a lie. But a person who is living in the truth, it is the most free person. Amen. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, if you are my disciples indeed, you will do, follow my commands and you will know the truth. Eh? You will abide in my commands. You will abide in my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So it means falsehood will keep you bound, but the truth will free you out. Amen. Someone, someone who is doing something that is associated with the truth, they have nothing to hide. Yeah. But someone who has a lot to do with what is filled with a lot of falsehood, they want to hide a little bit. Yeah. That's why the Bible says that when you do what is in the truth, then you also want to come and stand somewhere on a podium so that everyone can see. But when you want to do what is falsehood, you even want to hide a little bit in a bit of darkness. So the truth family will bring you out there. But falsehood will keep you down there. 
Let me just say it means that the truth will make you go where you have never gone before. You will do what you have never done before. But falsehood will keep you stuck, will keep you stagnant. So family, the word no is pronounced eido, eido in Greek. What does it mean? It means to be aware. It means to see. That is to know. Someone who knows it is someone who is aware. It is someone who sees. That's why somewhere when you are in a discussion and someone is explaining to you something for the first time, you said, I am not sure. But when they explain it and the moment you understand it, you say, I see now. So to know, it is to see. To know is to be aware. It is also translated to be knowledge. So to know it is to have what? Knowledge. What I love is when my wife ministered sometime in We Have Help Forever, she said that knowledge is power. But knowledge is not power until you start doing what you know. <laughs> you will never know what, what, what you know can do until you do what you know. Amen. So knowledge is not power just by knowing. Hey. No, there's a lot of people who know things but they're not doing anything. Hey. Is that power? Nope. No. Knowledge is power when you do something with what you know. Until you start doing something with what you know, I will find you where I have left you last year, this year. So until you start doing something about what you know, I will find you that you will have made a lot of progress in your life next year. Hallelujah. Yes. This time next year, you shouldn't be where you are this year. Yeah. This time next year, you should be far ahead where God wants you to be. God gives you knowledge through the Holy Spirit teaching you and reminding you. But knowing what the Holy Spirit has taught you and remembering it, it will not help you until you start doing it. Amen. Knowledge is power when you do something with what you know. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it is to, to perceive, that is to, to know. You have to be able to make perceptions. You need to be able to perceive that this is right, this is wrong. That is to know. You need to be sure. That is to know, being sure. When you know something, you are sure about it. Yeah. But when you do not know, that's why we will say, I'm not sure. Because you don't know. Yeah. But the moment they explain it over and over, you say, I now see. Amen. Then you are sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So to know, it is to be able to tell. You cannot tell something, someone something that you, you, you do not know. Can you tell? No. Can, can you live here and say, you, you, follow, you call someone. And you say, my friend, I, I have got something to tell you. And this day must not end until I tell you. And you, you raise their expectations. And they say, what is it? Just give me a clue. And you say, I don't know. <laughs> you have popped their oh, bamboo. You hey. have flattened their attire. Hey. You, you have destroyed their whole day. Why? Because you want to tell them what you don't know. Hey. But the moment you say, I'm going to tell you this and that, you are giving them a clue. Yeah. You will find them excited. Even when they are used to sleeping, taking a nap every Sunday afternoon, that day they will not take a nap. <laughs> Why? Because you have given, you have kept them awake. Yeah. Because of what you are going to tell them. <laughs> what you know. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, family, we've got to know some things in order to be able to tell others. Yeah. To know it is to understand. What is to understand? It is to stand and because the word understand is made up by two words, it's under and stand. So once you stand under something, it shadows you. Then it means you know it. You submit yourself to it. Yeah. Then you will be successful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So to know it is also to understand. What is to know in the English dictionary? To know it is to be able to realize. What is to realize? It is to understand clearly. Until you understand something clearly, even booking an exam room and exam date, it will be a waste of time. <laughs> if you don't understand something clear, hey. what, what are you going to do? To embarrass yourself <laughs> and waste the time of the month when they're supposed to mark things of people who understand what they're going to write about. Hey. If you don't understand, just give them a notice signal <laughs> and say, I don't understand. Hey. So to, to know it is to understand clearly. Hey. 
You need to realize what you have got yourself into. If you don't realize what you have got yourself into, you are going to waste your time and other people's time. Yeah. But if you understand clearly what you have got yourself into, nothing will stop you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you make this confession and say, when I understand clearly, when I understand nothing will stop me. Nothing will stop me. Hey, you will even call the lecturer and say, man, it, means, it seems like you can move the exam date closer. Hey. It seems like it's too late. What I know, it is too powerful that to, that to delay it. It seems like you can move the exam to tomorrow. Yeah. Why? Because I understand clearly. Yeah. But if you don't understand clearly, so many will keep on postponing things. <laughs> the lecture says, hey, are you ready? <laughs> Let me give you a bit of scope. The examination is going to be focusing on one, two, three. You, you will just be sending on the on the whole class chat group they say i wish this guy can just extend this examination i wish he can pro he can he can postpone it i you spend you have excuses because you are not ready for what you have got yourself into so family we need to be able to realize we need to understand clearly what we are in hallelujah Amen. so what is to know to know it is to recognize to recognize it is to identify from knowledge of appearance or character. To, to recognize from appearance of what? Character. Of appearance or character. So when someone steps in that door, I know exactly who they are because of their appearance and their character. There are people that sometimes when you go somewhere, I just want maybe to speak to the sisters who are about to get married. Or the brothers. Amen. The, the, the person who God is going to send in your life, mm. you need to be able to know them. You need to be able to understand them. Mm. You need to understand them from their appearance and their character. It says much before they even speak to you. Mm. So, what you got yourself, you get yourself into based on the understanding of the appearance and the character. That is what you are signing up for for the rest of your life. So, you need to be able to understand. You need to know the person. Yeah. You can meet someone today and next week you are getting married. Mm. What are you doing? <laughs> it's going to be disastrous to you and that person. And what is disastrous to you and the other person is going to affect a whole lot more other people. So family, we need to know, we need to understand. Appearance and character speaks a lot. Okay, you meet someone, you see their appearance, you see their character, already you assess that there is something wrong. And immediately they start hiding things for you, from you. You see already, what you have noticed and you do not do anything about it is growing into something else. They start hiding things. They start stealing things. They start a little bit lying. They start a little bit being late. They start a, so things that start small, they eventually grow into something very big because we got ourselves into something that we did not understand clearly. We did not realize. We need to be able to see the Holy Spirit is here to help us to realize, to be able to see. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit is here to help us to understand to stand under what we are going to submit ourselves to yeah. hallelujah Amen. so family we need to be able to notice that is to know you need to notice something once you notice something you are able to know it this morning when we came we noticed that electricity is not working from this side but after that we did not stop there we began to try and see if we can notice something else then we notice that electricity is coming from that side that is when electricity is it comes out of knowing until we knew that the plugs are only working from the other side, it will not have been advantageous for what we want to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to be able to notice, we need to be able to know. What does the word know mean? The word know it means to be aware through observation. <laughs> uh, that is how you can know. You can know through what? Observation. Observation. We need to be people who are observant. That's why even in Colossians chapter 4, verse number 2, the Bible says, continue earnestly in prayer, being diligent in it with thanksgiving. So it means we must not be ignorant 
So we, to know you need to be observant. Hallelujah. Even when you go somewhere, the first thing that you do, you begin to scan the environment, isn't it? Why? You want to know if you are in the right place or at the wrong place. If you are in the wrong place, what is the best thing to do? Is it to take a chair and an umbrella and get your cooler box out? No, it is time to pack your things and go. If you know that I, you have observed, yeah. I'm in the wrong place. I cannot be here. All that you need to do for your safety, pack and go. So what is what does the word no mean? It also means to inquire. You see, it is left up to you to observe, but you can also depend on others' help to know. What is to inquire? Is to find out from someone. Eh? Sometimes you can find out from Google. Sometimes you can find out from the Bible. Sometimes you can find out from this and that literature book. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to be able to inquire. So to know is to have information. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have information, family, it will help you to go to the next step in life. When, but how can you get information? You need to observe, you need to inquire, you need to learn, read. You will find information. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe you have been asking yourself, why do I need a teacher when the textbook is there and it is accessible? You can buy a textbook anywhere, anytime. There is no bookshop that will stop you from buying a textbook. But why do you need a teacher when the textbooks are there? You can buy them anytime, anywhere. Maybe you are asking yourself about the Holy Spirit. Why do I need the Holy Spirit to teach me? When the Bible is there, mm. I can open it, read it anytime I want. Mm. I even have different apps with different Bible versions. Why do I need the teacher? Yeah. Now, why we need the teacher family? It is because your teacher, even at school, they will teach you a specific subject so that you can understand. Yeah. Once you understand it, then you will be able to apply it. You cannot apply what you do not understand. No, you are going to collapse a huge organization. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's why organizations today, they need people with the knowledge of what is supposed to be done. Yeah. Otherwise, organizations are going to be destroyed. And what people do inside organizations reflect to the whole world. Hallelujah. It, the, 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 the people don't say that organization. No, it is, it is the people that are inside who are ruining the reputations of organizations because they wanted to do what they don't know. How can you do what you do not know? You will burn the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So yeah. we need to be able to understand so that we can be able to apply. So the Holy Spirit, he, he is our teacher because we need to understand the word. Why? Because anyone can read the word. Now I can give my daughter a three-year-old she can read the Bible, but does she understand what is supposed to happen? No. So we need the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can do what can explain to us so that we can be able to see what the word means. Once we see what the word means, we will be able to do what the word means. Amen. Amen. So family, even a little child, they can read the Bible. But they need someone to teach them so that yeah, they can understand. Yeah. Them. Once you taught them so that they understand, then you will see when they apply. They will apply with diligence. Amen. Amen. So family, we need a teacher, even though the word is out there. We need a teacher so that we can be able to understand. When we understand, it will help us in the application process. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. When you apply, you apply successfully. And the outcome is successful. Hallelujah. Amen. So family, we will never be able to swim until we allow the water to take control of us. Is there anyone here who doesn't know how to swim? Who needs some guidance? Okay, I saw one hand. I saw two hands. What you, you what, 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 what you were not able to do is to understand that you need to give control to God. <laughs> that is that is how you will master swimming. So when you get in the water, you do what? You understand the word. That the water needs to take control. But as long as you take control, the more, the more you will submit. Hallelujah. 
problem. People who are, who are still telling you today that I cannot swim. <laughs> I've tried everything. No, don't try anything. Just allow the water to take control. Okay. <laughs> the water can carry any size, any shape. Hey, family, you cannot stop water from carrying you. Okay. But if you want to carry water, <laughs> you will go down it. Instead of you su surfacing, you will go down and water will surface. So, family, here yeah, is a, you see, family, you must not change. No one will teach you this. Amen. When you go to the swimming school, they will just say, flip your water. You, you need to, you, you understand, family, what I'm saying. Yeah. But church will tell you, if you want to be able to swim, give water on the control. The water will get you. And all you will be doing is to change the direction. I want to go to the I want to go That is what I wanted to share with you. If you can, that's why we need the, the teacher. Yeah. That's why we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yes. Amen. Now, it might seem like a joke. As long as you still want to control the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You will keep on submitting hey. when you are supposed to be surfacing in life. Jesus. But the moment you give control to the Holy Spirit, Amen. you will keep on surfacing. Amen. All you will be doing is to say, Holy Spirit, today where are we going? Amen. To the left, to the right. So, family, the only way that the Holy Spirit will be able to guide us it is when we give him complete control. Amen. But as long as we are still saying, Holy Spirit, I think today we must do one, two, three. Yeah. I'm tired of these things that you are saying I must do. Yeah. That is the time you are saying, I'm tired of surfacing. I now want to begin to drown. Yeah. And let me tell you, family, life will drown you. Life is not like liquid water. No, the life that everyone sees. Life will drown you as long as you are still saying to the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm in control. Yeah. Family, I just want you to let go. Amen. Let everything go. Amen. Family, you know the problem that we want to always hold on and hold on, it is because of the experiences that we have had in life. What some others have told us. Then we say, I'm going to do it the very same way. Hey. Let me tell you. Your time is not their time. Amen. No, their time was their time. Yep. Your time is also coming. Amen. When your time comes, no one will stop it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But family, we need to let go everything. We need to hand it over to the Holy Spirit. Now, the verse that we have read in the Amplified Version, the Bible says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. Now, in the Amplified Version, it says in brackets, you have been set apart. You are specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And, and all of you know the truth because he teaches us. He illuminates our minds and guards us from error. You see? So as long as we are still on guard, we will still continue in error. But the moment we say, Holy Spirit, we surrender everything to you, we will live in the truth. Hallelujah. When we give God to the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. With, it, in, with thanksgiving in it. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and guard your minds. That is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will guard your hearts and guard your mind. As long as you are still on guard, you will stay awake when some of us are sleeping. But the moment you release to the Holy Spirit, you will sleep with the rest of everyone. Amen. That six hours minimum, you will also enjoy it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, family, we need to let everything go. We need to add everything to the mighty Holy Spirit. Maybe asking yourself, who was saying this and who was he saying it to? This is John who wrote the first letter of John. John, who is the author of the Gospel of John. John! who is the one who tells us about the revelations of, from Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation. This is the same job. Now, who did he write this letter to? He wrote this letter family to the whole family of true Christians. 
Why did he write this letter to the whole family of true Christians? So that he can preserve them from falling into the seduction of false teaching. Because false teaching seduces people so that they can depart from the truth. So Paul is saying, now, with these two Christians that are remaining, what I have to do is to tell them that there is something that helps them to know the truth. That you have, you have, you have had the Holy Spirit poured out on you by Christ Jesus. Now, you all know the truth. So, you have the Holy Spirit who is enabling you to know the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Paul is preserving us. Even today, even though he wrote it then, but he is preserving Christians even today. So that we don't fall into falsehood. So that we do not fall into the setup of the Antichrist. Antichrist, it is people who are against everything that Christ is for. Those are, that is the Antichrist. We have false prophets, we have false teachers. So the, the John is saying, I want to protect you from falsehood. I told you, if you live in falsehood, you will live in bondage. Yeah. But if you live in the truth, you will live in freedom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So John wrote this letter so that he can preserve the church of Jesus Christ. This clarifies us. Where does the Holy Spirit come from? The Holy Spirit comes from Christ, from Jesus. And now, after Paul laid hands on those disciples who were in Ephesus, the Holy Spirit came upon them. The Holy Spirit did not come from Paul. No, the Holy Spirit came from Christ. From, he came upon. Upon, it means the Holy Spirit came from heaven and descended upon them. The Holy Spirit comes from Christ. This is teaching us that now when we have the Holy Spirit, we will know all things. What are all things? The things that the Holy Spirit teaches us. Things that we need to remember. Jesus said to his disciples, but when the Helper comes, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And he will remind you some things. No, all things. He will remind you all things. Amen. Now you have heard the Holy Spirit poured yeah. on you by Christ and you all know all things. The Holy Spirit will not teach you just some things. Yeah. He will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Oh, there is, there, there, you know, that's why every time when they make reference of books that you can get information, they tell you about encyclopedias. But even the encyclopedia does not know everything. Does not know all things. But the Holy Spirit knows all things. The family, the Holy Spirit knows all things. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and he enables us to know all things. Well, you cannot know all things with your own capacity and strength. You will read all the books but still not know all things. Now, when the Holy Spirit and it puts us to know all things. This is how it happens. It happens by the grace of God. Amen. It is the grace of God that enables us to be able to observe, to be able to see, to be able to understand. That is the grace of God upon our lives. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit family is a free gift. You cannot buy him yeah. or deserve it. Amen. No, there is no amount of work that you will do so that you can receive the Holy Spirit. No, he is the gift of grace. You cannot buy him over a counter, not on a wristband, not in a newspaper, or Amen. on a bottle of wine. You can't buy the Holy Amen. Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is a free gift from yeah. God. Now, the Holy Spirit is signified by this thumb, because the thumb points upwards. It points to heaven. The Holy Spirit is a free gift from heaven. The Holy Spirit is a gift of grace. You cannot earn the work of grace, the rewards of grace. No, God just gives you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. The Holy Spirit enables us to know the truth. So when you have him, you know the truth. When you have the Holy Spirit, you know the truth. The Holy Spirit is not the spirit of error. He is the spirit of truth. 
Then when you have the Holy Spirit, you will know what? The truth. Because he's the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. So even when you eat vitamin C, you will have vitamin C in your body. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you have the Holy Spirit in your life, then you will know the truth in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I see everyone is surprised. What is he talking about? Vitamin C. <laughs> if someone paints you with a green paint, are you going to be orange? No. No. So when you have the Holy Spirit upon your life, you are going to have the truth in your life because Amen. the Holy Spirit is true. Mm -hmm. When I paint you with a green color, you will be green, green not orange. Amen. So that's what this means. So the Holy Spirit teaches us the truth and it reminds us the truth. The Holy Spirit enables us to know spiritual realities. Huh? So spiritual realities, it is spiritually searching. He gives us spiritual intelligence. Amen. You are able to know. I know I thought I was gonna go according to me. So the Holy Spirit helps you to know if you really need to go or not. That is the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what is it that you are going to know. You will have a complete peace of mind. Yeah. You will have peace in your heart. You will have serenity. You will have complete tranquility when the Holy Spirit says yes you can go but if the Holy Spirit says no how are you going to know you will be restless yeah. you will be saying I'm not sure you see huh? you need to be sure Amen. if you have to go or not yeah. I'm not sure you, no 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 I'm not comfortable hey. you need to know knowing is being comfortable Amen. I have to go I need to do this the Holy Spirit gives you joy in your heart. It begins to feel like you are, you are excited, you are about to jump. But when you are not supposed to do something that you want to do, then you will be restless. Eh? You will have a sleepless night. Do you know why you did not sleep last night? There is no one who looks like you did not sleep last night. So, you know why someone did not sleep last night? It is because they are not sure if they are supposed to do something or not. But if they are sure, they had a peace of mind, and they did not sleep like a little baby because babies always wake up until they know the routine. Yeah, kids always wake up maybe two times, three times during the night. But family, I want to assure you, someone who was sure when they slept last night about what they're supposed to do today, they slept like me. You know when I woke up, I wanted to go to sleep again. <laughs> because that is how I was enjoying sleep. Because I am sure about what I am going to do yeah. today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you are not sure, you will not sleep. You will begin to talk about stress. You will begin to speak about restlessness. That, that is communication. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is communication. Mm -hmm. So family, the Holy Spirit... He illuminates the word. So he makes the word visible. That's why you need the teacher even when there is a word. Mm. So the, the Holy Spirit will make the word visible for you. The, the Holy Spirit brings light to the word. Hallelujah. Amen. He brings light to the word. He helps to, to, to clarify things and explain things to you. That's what the Holy Spirit comes and do. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit will explain things to you. Have you ever someone says, can you shed a light concerning this or that? Okay? They want a light because it seems like this thing is a bit dark. Hallelujah. They can't see it clear. They say, shed the light so that I can be able to know exactly what I'm supposed to do. The Holy Spirit, he comes to shed a light in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit clears things up in our lives. Huh? How are you going to know? He teaches you, you have to remember so that you can do. What is he going to teach you? He teaches you the word so that you can remember the word, so that you can do the word. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. You will be sure because you will be doing what is true. The Holy Spirit comes and he spells out exactly how things are supposed to be. Yeah. Everyone can read the word, but not everyone can understand the way the Holy Spirit comes and He makes you understand concepts. Hallelujah. Amen. He makes you understand things. He brings light to things that you do not understand. He makes 
He makes it easier for you to understand the word. Not only the word, he also makes it easier for you to understand life. Because life can be complicated. But the Holy Spirit will help you to understand life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So family, let me tell you something. Many have fallen into the deception of the Antichrist due to lack of the anointing. So you have the anointing from the Holy Spirit who you were given by Christ. That anointing helps you to know all things. So many have fallen into deception because they did not know all things. Because the Antichrist will let you know some things. Things that are important for you, he will hide them. Because they will help you to succeed in life. He will tell you things that will make you stagnant. Faith in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Things that will make you be afraid of approaching life. But, family, the Holy Spirit is upon our lives so that we can be able to succeed in life. The Antichrist family, he saws deception in people's lives. That is what the Antichrist. Anything that is against Christ saws deception. Anything that is against Christ saws lies into people's lives. It saws fear into people's lives. It saws division into people's lives. Why? That is the enemy's strategy. When the enemy wants to weaken you, he will divide you so that he can conquer. That's what the enemy does. Look at the lion when you are watching Animal Planet one day. When the animal finds a head of buffaloes, what it does, it begins to confuse them so that it can scatter them. Yeah. Why? Because when they are together, they are strong, they are powerful, the lion cannot penetrate. But the moment the, animal, the lion scatters the head, then the one that is isolated and alone, it is the one that is vulnerable for the attack from the lion. Yeah. So the enemy divides. So the Antichrist will want to divide you from the people that Jesus has for your life so that he can destroy your life. Hallelujah. Amen. But family, I want you to know that now the Holy Spirit family, he illuminates. He brings things to light. Anything hidden, he makes us aware. Anything we cannot understand, he enables us to understand. Family, that is the anointing. That is the Holy Spirit upon our lives. Family, the opposite of illuminate, it is to conceal. It is to hide. The Antichrist hides things from people so that people cannot progress in life. But the anointing, the Holy Spirit, he reveals things to us so that we can progress and succeed in life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So family, the Antichrist conceals information, he hides information, he confuses people. Many still do not understand the importance of church or fellowship even in this day and age. Yeah. Why? Because they have submitted to the spirit of deception. Hallelujah. But if you know that you have submitted to the spirit of truth, family, you will know what is the importance of church, what is the importance of fellowship. That's why even God takes fellowship so serious to an extent that he says, do not neglect gathering with one another. He says, do so like, like as others may be, eh? as it seems to others. Do not neglect gathering with others as it seems to others. Eh? But you continue gathering, also exhorting each other with hymns and psalms. Then we dance. Then we speak the word of God here. We dance. We, we rejoice in his presence. As if the day of the Lord was near. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how God values fellowship. Fellowship is very important. Family, you need to know that don't fall to the deception of the Antichrist who doesn't want you to associate with other believers. No, God wants us to be one thing. When we are together, we are stronger. The lion will not be able to scatter us. Once he scatters you, you will be isolated. Once you are isolated, you are susceptible to his attack. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we need to stay firm and even fire. Fire begins to grow bigger and hotter when you put more firewood together. The moment you take one piece of wood, even if it had fire, you throw it outside of the fire together with others. It begins to die out. Amen. So, family, I just want to encourage you today. Do not fall to the deception of falsehood. Amen. But stay in the truth. 
that Christ has brought in our life through who? Through the Holy Spirit. Many fall into deception day in, day out, even now in the 20th century. Why? Because of lack of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit family is here so that we can know about Him, so that we cannot fall into deception. Because you have had the Holy Spirit poured out on you by Christ. Yeah. Then you know all the truth. When you know all the truth, there is no amount of falsehood that will take out that truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So, family, with that said, we will continue next week with part number three of lessons to remember. What do we need to remember? We have the Holy Spirit from Christ and we know the truth so that we don't fall into deception. Hallelujah. Amen. So with that said, let us close our eyes and focus on the cross of Jesus. Heavenly love,